Okay, okay, I'm back with the, uh, the old school function. Are they real or are they agents? This one. This one uh, I was planning on doing for a while. And we already know the answer. And right now with all this shenanigans, even the dumbest among us should know the answer by now. And if you don't, I don't know what to say. But right now they're looking very desperate. And uh, we're talking about the house of consciousness, so-called consciousness. Now, yes, they have built up a so-called platform and they have uh, have a lot of influence amongst the undereducated in the black uh, group. Uh, they get a lot of hits and they've been collaborating with others for schemes to get even more hits because, you know, the ad sense is uh, drying up. And before I even begin, let me just say this. I find it pretty funny that my videos are restricted from YouTube from being monetized because they're not family friendly. But yet, Tommy Sotomayor, House of Consciousness, and all these other individuals, they're family friendly. I don't know how that works out, but I, I guess, you know, they, they have their ways. But apparently I must be the truth because I'm getting shut down. So anyways, House of Consciousness, been following them for quite some time, way before a lot of people even uh, knew them like that. Uh, you already know the history of Sonata, he already tells you what he's all about, so-called Black Pan New Black Panther Party, and that's supposed to be his uh, stripes uh, for legitimacy, but before, matter of fact, before I even get into the deepness, this might be a two-hour situation, two-parter. Let's just start off with this. This is what I've always said when it comes to agents. There are different places that people get turned out. And uh, one of the main uh, places that people get turned out is in prison. Why do they get turned out in prison? Because when people do their crime, people don't want to go to prison. They don't want to stay there. <laughs> and they prefer to ha not have a record if, if uh, that could be helped. So, of course, the police, the FBI, the even the CIA, working through the FBI, they might come to these people and say, Hey, we need you to do X, Y, and Z, and we'll train you. And on top of that, we'll pay you. And on top of that, you'll be immune from petty crimes. Uh, the charges. This is how it goes. You see the same thing when it's the Black Panthers, the old Black Panther uh, agents, and anybody else. It's the same routine. How can they uh, do this? How can the white man do this? Because, and how can these people accept? Because these people are criminals, which means that they are only concerned about themselves. And a lot of times the people are drug addicts, usually most of the time. <clears throat> Which you really know they're only concerned about themselves and they're not going to give up the drug. So white man figures I might as well use these people to my advantage. And obviously when you're using them, the white man is kind of admitting that he's trying to destroy black people. Because why else would you need these people to go undercover as black power people? <laughs> I mean, what's the advantage to that? The advantage is to stop black unity. That's the advantage. And, uh, again, Sodnetta himself, he already told you he went to prison, showed you the pictures, and he was a drug dealer. You can look at, I mean, you can look at people, anybody who knows the deal. A lot of people don't believe I could tell, but you can look in people's eyes and you can see what they do. And when I say eyes, I don't mean, uh, if they look mean or not. I'm, I'm talking about, you can see the coloring of the so-called the whites of their eyes and you can see you can tell what kind of drugs they're on what kind of drugs they take alcohol and all that kind of stuff you can tell that anybody who comes from the streets they, they know this kind of stuff even the, the addicts themselves so 99 percent of the house of consciousness are now they're going to look at it as oh they're attacking he's attacking the house of consciousness i am because i'm attacking coon agents that's what i'm attacking if you're not a coon agent 
you won't be attacked. But I'm putting you out there, though. 99% or what? Ex-cons and drug addicts. That's, that's what they are. And uh, they usually don't have a job. Their job is being a part of the House of Cons. It's just this. That's what their job is. I'm sure they get a stipend from the FBI. And a lot of them are Freemasons. If not all. The ones and a lot don't make the cut. A lot don't understand the scheme. They come and go like comic book characters with comic book names. I'm about to run down that list of names in a minute. Some you might may have uh, forgotten about because they left or got pushed out because they didn't have the right influence. Or they found out something else or they didn't get the money that they wanted to get. First of all, Sarnet is, uh, what was he, 54? I think my older sister, older sister, I think she's about that age. And one thing I know about these people that, that are money hungry and come from the old school, they have schemes for your ass. They don't let the younger people uh, uh, <laughs> undermine them and get the be better of them. That's the one thing I definitely know. So that's why a lot of people keep going against Sarnetta. They end up losing because they don't understand these old school people. They're not trying to take a loss, man. So, um, yeah, these guys are Freemasons. A lot of them, most of them, which is why they, you can see the drugs on their faces too, by the way. Whether it's the Sankofa. I think Sarnetta had a video up last night, live or whatever, with Sankofa on the streets. <laughs> you can see Sankofa's teeth and the way he speaks. <laughs> you you could just tell, man. It's it's the cocaine, man. You could tell. I mean, come on. You know the the the, the press ups, the pull ups. You know, I, I'm not trying to go in on people like that, but yet, you know these these are coon agents. You could tell. So. The reason they talk about Egypt, this is the one thing I, I will say, though. They do pick up and uh, they encourage people who dropped out of high school because they were uninterested in school. I admit, when I first went to high school, they were talking about Rome, Roman civilization, even uh, Egypt. I remember hearing about Egypt in sixth grade, but they didn't say that that was our people or nothing like that. They the, the teacher I had was a Jew, so she was talking about Israel and all that kind of stuff and putting it in that perspective. So I wasn't really interested in all that kind of stuff at the time unless I saw it on the news. But you know, when we start getting in high school, ninth grade, I saw they were talking about Rome. And my mind was like this. I'll be honest with you. It's crazy how I was totally uninterested in school. But after school, because I did drop out, then I went to college. And reading up while I dropped out, that you know, that's what made me get back into it. And uh, I was totally uninterested in Rome. My, my feeling was this. At the time, I said, well, the stuff is not around for me to see, number one, how they know. Number two, why should we care if it's not around? But see, little did I know that it was around. So once I saw that it was around, then I said, oh, okay. And then, then I started getting interested in it. But see, they didn't teach that in school, you know, inner city schools. What do you expect? So these guys in their teaching of Egypt, it got the high school dropout and the people who are uninterested in education and their main concern is smoking weed and, and all that kind of stuff, doing nothing. You got these people to talk about Egypt, which it's cool to a degree, but the problem is when the House of Consciousness and its affiliates and its associates talk about Egypt, it's not for black consciousness. It's for Freemasonry. That's why they're talking about Egypt. And, and they, they talk about our ancestors. They're not talking about black people because notice they don't have that debate of whether or not the Egyptians were uh, black, which is what they should have with white people. But they don't have these debates. And all their debates are staged any goddamn way. Uh, which is why people are now tired of it. Because they all they only debate themselves. You know? And when they debated the Jew. That was just their, their master. That they were debating. Which was all set up. 
So, you know, they don't debate people. What they need to do is debate people from the universities. Because that's what I have done. That's why nobody can fuck with me. Debate them and see what your theories, how they stand up. I know how I know how to debate. I debate what facts upon facts, which is why I shut people down. When you come to me and you start lying, you already lost because I'm going to expose you. That's why people get frustrated with me because they come to me lying. So these people speak Freemasonry. You know, the six proton, protons, the six neutrons, six electrons. That's Freemasonry. Everything, you know, you know, some people repeat that because they don't even know what the hell a proton, a neutron or electron is. So they repeat it and they act like they're wise now. You got to keep in mind these house of consciousness people. These are ghetto drug addicts. <laughs> I mean, they're trying. You're getting educated by ex-con drug addicts. I mean, is that the place to get educated from? I mean, come on, let's get real. So what they do is all they're doing is regurgitating a Freemasonry to you. And this is how the Freemason works because they, they, they uh, come to you. You don't go to them. You don't go say, hey, man, I want some money. I want a good job. Uh, please, man, please stop. Stop hurting me. They seek you out. This is what they're doing is they preach the Egypt stuff. I'm about to get into these names in a minute. Uh, they preach the Egyptian stuff. They see how they gauge your interest. And if your interest is positive, then they say, okay, we have some people. Then they keep testing you out and blah, blah, blah. And then they see how it is. And then after a while, they might uh, endorse you. <clears throat> so it's all Freemasonry. That's why everything they're doing is not helping you at all. <laughs> because it's not meant to help you. It's meant to help the white man because the white man runs Freemasonry. What's the usual excuse that I, I know somebody is thinking about typing now or typing right now? Oh, Freemasonry comes from ancient Egypt, ancient Africa, brother. Uh, how are you going to put that down? Okay. A lot of things come from ancient Egypt, ancient Africa, but who is in control of it? Not you, not Egyptians, not real Egyptians, not Africans. The white man is in control of it. So don't preach that to me. What you're doing now with your Freemasonry is you are being tutored and controlled and pimped by the white man. And it's all about money. Again, you take away the money, you take away the control. You take away the money, you take away people's interest in Freemasonry. That's the only reason why people are interested, because they want to be able to move up in society. That's it. Why else would you want to become a Freemason? If Freemasonry is all about controlling people so that the people in power, the Jews, can do what they want. You want this money? Do X, Y, and Z. You go through the Freemason tasks in order to be validated and to be trusted. That's the same thing when you're on the job or you're in the military, anywhere you go. Yes, uh, white man society is based on things that black people have uh, set up thousands of years ago. But that's what happens when you lose wars. People take your knowledge and use, use it against you. When you're on the job, they are looking to earn your trust because the higher you move, the more responsible you become and, you, and the more authority you have. And the more money that you are entrusted with. Some people have been on a job 20 years and they end up ripping the uh, company off. So they never tr stop uh, uh, suspecting you of something, you know, because I was on a job. Lady was there for like 20 years <laughs> handling the money. White lady. She came. She stole five, six thousand dollars. Happens. Remember one time, see, the people they trust, the, the so-called managers, they bought one in from another company, I think from uh, Albany, from way out there, Indian. And she looked nice. She was nice looking. But see, they trust these people because when they do the interviews, they talk a good game. Their resumes may seem impressive. But she came. She stole money. And she wasn't even there half a year. 
but she was already a manager. She stole money. They said it was for her boyfriend or something like that, man. <laughs> but see, the people that can be trusted, they don't move them up. And a lot of people get the job by a uh, process of elimination. Because once others are proven to be untrustworthy, then they say, okay, we'll come to you. You haven't done anything. So now we'll give you the shot. So you keep moving up. Military start out as a private in the army. Takes a long time to become a general. If you ever become a general. Some don't even become officers. <laughs> I mean, I imagine most enlisted men don't become officers in their uh, careers. So you have to do a whole lot. <clears throat> so this is what this Freemasonry is all about, too. And that's why these people are the ghetto Illuminati, this house of consciousness, and their affiliates. So they get black people talking about Egypt, but they get black people off from talking about black uh, American topics and their immediate uh, goals and uh, issues in this country. And what they do is they trick you by saying things like the goddamn white man, this white man, this devil. See, those are the provocative words that make you think, oh, these guys must be real. This cracker. But see, notice how they never talk about the Jew, or they rarely do. They might say the Jew here, they might say it there, but they're really leaving them alone. And that's how you can tell. I always give people the Jewish test. <laughs> if they run away from the Jewish test, we already know what they're all about. They're agents. Bottom line. There's no getting around it. Because the the Jews control the money. It is their money. So people who want money, they're not going to talk about the Jews. So that's how that works. So, uh, again, these guys are like a Marvel comic book uh, cast of characters with all different uniforms, all surrounding uh, Egypt. Uh, disguised as African even though Egypt was African, but, you know, they're, they're talking Egypt is Freemasonry. Modern day white man's Freemasonry disguised as African to get black people interested. The sad part is it gets black people interested. Or shall I say that's the good part. The sad part is they get black people interested for the wrong reasons. That's the problem. And then a lot of black people try to mimic these guys because they see that these guys are getting money. By simply talking and doing the YouTube thing. Which is what it's all about. You know, Sardinetta was, you know, hustling his uh, DVDs and, and and before that VHS tapes. Uh, a lot of ways people used to do things before YouTube was public access. And I don't even know the state of public access these days, but... Uh, if the YouTube stops paying for a while, I'm sure public access will make a comeback. So these guys, they get their donations too, but I'm going to get into all that in a minute. Uh, so they get people, they get black people interested, which is a good thing. But again, it's for the wrong reasons. Black people come away thinking they're wise and they start doing research, useless research on the Medu Netter and all this kind of stuff. See, this is what I always tell black people, man. If you could take the time to do all that shit for some ghetto Negroes. Who are dope fiends, ex cons. Since you're already doing it, you might as well enroll in college and get something for it, get something out of it. Now, I know math is our Achilles heel, but damn it, you can get through it. Just take the math separately, like in the summertime or something like that, so you can just have your full concentration on the math only. You don't have to worry about other. Uh, subjects interfering with your uh, thinking. That's what I did. And that, that's the way to go. Uh, I even held the math off until the end, too. Because <laughs> I knew uh, I knew I was going to have to take it. But once you get past it, then you feel good. So, And you don't even have to take it at the four-year university, either. You know, you could probably take it online, maybe, too. You know? I don't want... Don't cheat, either, when you do the math, either, because you're going to need that. The math is not as hard as you think it is. The one I took at the end of my bachelor's anyways, 
it was a math logic, which was actually very interesting and very useful in this society, especially if you do project management and all that kind of stuff. Very useful. So anyways, <clears throat> go get you a degree because these ghetto teachers, keep in mind a lot of these guys, I'm going to do the Phil Valentine in the future. <laughs> People have been asking. And these other guys, they charge you classes. Crazy amounts of money. I don't know why they charge black people, poor black people so much goddamn money. Like black people got this kind of money to just to be thrown around. And they're basically ripping you off because you're not getting anything out of it that you can't get out of a book. So if you're going to give somebody money, go to a university, get a college degree. Now, I say stay away from the arts and get into the sciences. But if you're that into history, you can go to uh, college and become a history professor. If you're that into the Egypt thing, write books. And I'm sure there might be some limitations. They might try to stop people from throwing stuff around, but you can do that. Don't listen to these ghetto. These are ghetto criminals, man. I mean, who else is going to get... I mean, if a crack, you see a crackhead on the street begging for money, are you going to go and get educated by a crack fiend? No, because you're like, this is a crack fiend. This guy can't tell me shit. So why would you listen to these guys just because they have YouTube? They're out on the corner hustling on the streets. That's their job. They're not paying taxes, not that, you know... None of us should be paying taxes, but, you know, I'm just saying they're not paying taxes. And they keep talking about black businesses, but they don't have black businesses. Black businesses are not uh, merchandise made by the Chinese on a table on the street. That's not a black business. That's a black hustle. A black business is a storefront. Or a business that you own, you can pass down to your kids. You can't pass down a table to your kids. Now, granted, people are making money. And I don't knock that. You know, if you can make some money, make some money. But don't call it a black business. Because as you, you can see where Harlem and uh, New York in general and um, I gather across the country, Negroes are on the streets, Indians Asians and others are in the stores. Those are the businesses that they own. Those are what those are the businesses that are recognized because obviously the white man is taxing them. And you can bet all those people are skimming. So that's what organized crime is. Because I always said to myself, damn, what the hell? How do these organized crime get paid? See, they own businesses and they skim money. Skimming on the uh, casino and all that kind of stuff, and pizza places and clubs, flower shops, places that are that's hard to really account uh, for the money uh, that they make, and that's how they money launder. But that's not exactly how they just make the money. They skim money. Skimming is taking money that you're supposed to pay to the IRS, and you pocket it. That's what the hell skimming is. And that's why they call it skimming. And casinos, that's what they do. That's what you see in that movie Casino when they uh, pocket the money and send it back to the bosses because people were getting their cut. So organized crime jerks off the IRS, but obviously the IRS doesn't really give a damn unless because they're all in cahoots. Matter of fact, I think if I can remind myself, I'll provide a link. This guy details every damn thing about organized crime, drug dealing, the Bushes and the Clintons and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully, I, I won't forget to provide a link. Matter of fact, let me see if I can write this thing down and stuff so I can provide that link. So you can read a lot of this stuff for yourself and see it's not BS. I need your pen to work. Link Bush. Hopefully, I remember what that means. Hard to write like this, but um, <clears throat> I'll provide that link. My man tells you all about why there is an IRS 
Matter of fact, I'll tell you that <laughs> in a future uh, video. And why drugs are on every corner. And why black godfathers come and go. Get recycled. So anyways, you can't learn anything from these house of consciousness. If you notice, these guys can't even put two words together. They don't even sound like they graduated sixth grade. Sonetta in particular. I know he's going to be pissed off. But I'm just telling it like it is. How many times you see Sarnetta? What is you thoughts, my brother Larry? What is they be doing, brother Larry? You know, I'm like, damn, this motherfucker, he must have dropped out of school in the sixth grade. I guess he's doing all right for himself, though. You know, the, the street hustle can help, you know. Hey, man, it is what it is on that. But. These and, and and Larry, you know, he's a convicted killer. He told, I know he's gonna say, "Ah, oh, man, I told the story right," but he told different stories on what happened. But you know, he says he tells the truth. I understand people want to change shit around because you know, even though you served the time, but you know, you want to change the details around just a little bit because you don't want to seem like that bad of a guy. But you know, you did what you did. Anyways, let me get down the list of these these characters because that's what they are. Fellow criminals. I know they're gonna hate me, but if you can prove me wrong, I'll take it back. Run down the list of these names. Sarnetta, of course. An assumed name. Seville. Sankofa. <laughs> A lot of people, a lot of these so-called pro-blacks, black power guys named Sankofa, but they supposed to be into this Egyptian stuff. Imam Bashir, an imam without a fucking beard. I don't know how that's possible, but that's the way it was. He seems to have uh, dropped out of sight, by the way. Lord Abba, a Moor. And the only reason why they even keep dealing with these Moors is because the Moors are Freemasons as well. Just same thing with the Nation of Islam. Which is why they deal with the Wesley Muhammad and all them, even though the, the Nation of Islam is long discredited. Uh, Captain Tazariak. I know he's not necessarily a part of the House of Consciousness, but they, they're definitely in cahoots because they keep dealing with each other. I mean, either they want hits, their name out there or something, but they keep dealing with each other. Brother Larry, as I mentioned... I actually like Larry. He's a little stubborn. I guess he is the realest out of them. Because he doesn't come under an assumed name. But he still has an agenda too though. <laughs> and he, he's reluctant to change his opinion even when he's proven wrong. A.A. A. Rashid admitted that he's a Freemason. The red pill and the blue pill. Two twins. Twin devils of deception. You know, they got an opinion for everything, but solutions for nothing. Sutet, guess he dropped out of the situation. He was a cocaine addict too, criminal. Shaka Amos. <laughs> Egyptian crazy. He seems like a nice guy, you know, pretty effeminate, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, they all have these names. When one leaves, then another just happens to pop up. They act like they found them on the street corner, but they already knew them. And then they just put them on there and ask for their opinion. And then if they shock the audience, then they invite them back and see how they do. Because they're all Freemasons. Ghetto Freemasons. And what's that female, uh, damn, the one with the tattoos? That's another one. There was the Abundance Child, that one. She was sexy, though. But she's messing with that stinky inky, so she can't be too uh, on the level. Uh, then you got the minister inky himself. Why would you take medical advice for somebody who didn't even finish high school? But see, these people like the, the, the get out of uh, paying taxes and get out of being official and licensed for whatever they do. But they want to keep trying to tell you how to live and put and trust them with your health and well-being. Who are these people? That's the question you have to ask. And once you do the digging, you'll find that these people are ex-cons and crack fiends. 
Then you have Brother Reggie, who they're calling Dr. Reggie for some damn reason. I'll give it to him. At least he has college degrees, but I don't know what the fuck he did with them because he apparently isn't putting them to use. And it was in computer science, I believe, too. So what the fuck, man? This man should have a pretty good job instead of peddling and, and doing things with these guys. So he's in the history, but yet he went to school for computers. Doesn't make sense. And he's not a real doctor, which is the same thing with that Ali, Dr. Ali Muhammad. These guys keep calling themselves doctors and they don't have a doctorate. But at least he had a bachelor's degree, which is why he can pass off and sound halfway intelligent. But they really should stop calling themselves doctors. I know things come up in, in, in college, uh, you know, money can fall f uh, short and all that kind of stuff. So people may not finish or they may not make the grade, but don't go around calling yourself a doctor. Uh, you got your Herman Smalls. He seems cool. You know, I don't, I don't see anything that seems overly fraudulent and phony about this guy. <clears throat> Brother Polite. Of course, they had their alleged beef. We already know what Brother Polite is all about. Scam artist, an African. And he is what he is. Sir Asut and Seti. Of course, he, I mentioned him because he was down with him at, uh, a few times and then he kept breaking away. I guess he's permanently broken away, but I figure I just mentioned him because he was down with him uh, at some point in time. You got Umar Johnson, who was down with him at one point in time until that baby mother fiasco came out. And Sonata keeps playing stupid on that, but obviously, come on, you can just hear it. And you know, he was trying to get revenge on Umar because Umar blew up. So he was just trying to... Uh, Shit on Umar, because I guess Sarnetta is looking for bigger and better things. I remember Sarnetta even said he wanted to be the new host of the former show Like It Is, because he was real black. Now, he probably would have been a good host, but his diction is horrible. You can't go on Channel 7 and, and, and start talking the way Sarnetta talks. He probably wouldn't feel stupid, but, but I would feel stupid for him. Because Channel 7, out of all the New York news stations, Channel 7, to me, is the most professional uh, of the uh, the people that's on the air. So you, you got to have your, your shit together, man. I know you want that job. Hell, let's put me on. Then you can see my face. I'll do a good job. Uh, and be real with it, too. Because, you know, like it is, that was a hell of a show. Mother got me into watching that when I was uh, younger. So, once I started watching TV on my own, you know, I, I stuck to it. And, you know, they never had a show like that again. And the replacement is...